oh sh I look ugly in full HD. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new around here then my name is Haley and welcome to my channel. So I'm gonna do something that I have never done in my life before today which is filming and editing two videos in a span of one day. If I die of sleep deprivation, just know that I tried. By the way, this sudden upgrade in video quality is not going to be permanent. I borrowed this camera from my friend from my short film project and I figured that I should use it in one or two of my videos because why not? But since I can't really film much, I'm just going to film the intro and the outro. The rest of the video will be voiced over. Anyway, as you can already tell from the title of this video, I'm going to talk about designing today. If you don't know, I work part-time in an advertisement company. I make videos, I make card news, I make all kind of content for them. But the thing is, I know about designing. Like, I know enough to not use Comic Sans font in something serious, but I mean, that's it. I don't even know how to use Photoshop. But the thing is, the company kind of like my designs, so I think that I'm not so bad at it. But anyway, I'm not here today to rub it in your face and tell you guys that I am the best designer in the world. I am not. I am not even close to it. I am here today to introduce you guys to the best free design programs and tools especially suitable for beginners. Since I have a lot to say about this topic, I am going to break this whole thing into two videos. This video is going to be dedicated to the free designing program that I am using which is GIMP and the next video is going to be about free design websites, picture searching websites and all of that. This video is already long enough so let's just get right into it. Let's go! I've been using GIMP since I first knew about designing. It's free and simple to use. There are tons of tutorials on YouTube that you can follow and I think that is a pretty good start for someone who is new to designing. Just type GIMP in the Google search bar and then hit enter and you'll see the homepage. You can download the installer directly or through BitTorrent, it's all up to you. Once you have downloaded and installed GIMP, this is how it's going to look like on the desktop. Double click to open it and this is how the interface looks like. One cool thing about GIMP is that you can actually personalize the loading screen right here if you want. I'll probably make a tutorial about it in the future so look forward to that. Now I'm going to go over the basic tools and menus because I know how it's like to be completely brand new to something. It's good to be curious but it is not good when you everything up trying to trim just one layer of the picture. First thing first, let's get familiar with GIMP's interface. This is the main toolbox where all the tools are gonna be at. This is the tool options dock where you can adjust the options of the tools. This huge emptiness right here is the image window where your picture is gonna be at. To the right is the brushes, patterns, gradients dock and right below it is the layers, channels, path, undo history dock. I know I seem to be rushing things but I am letting you know only the most important factors. The others can be explored as you advance on with more complicated designs. Now I'm going to introduce you to the main toolbox and to demonstrate the main function of each tool, I'm going to import a picture into the application and work on it. So this first row right here, I usually only use these for selecting tools. I guess that's why I'm still a designer. The first tool lets you select a rectangle region. The second tool lets you select an elliptical region. The third tool lets you select a region in a hand-drawn shape. 
and the fourth tool lets you select a continuous region based on colors. The only tool in the second row you need to know about is the color picker tool. Its name is pretty self-explanatory. It picks a color and puts that color into the foreground color tray. Moving on to the third row, this is the move tool. Just click it and move the picture around the way you want. And this is the crop tool. It lets you crop the picture into a certain size, but if you want to crop just one layer, then do remember to check this box right here. Moving on to the fourth row, I only use the rotate tool and the scale tool. The rotate tool lets you rotate the image and the scale tool lets you make the image bigger or smaller. In the fifth row, there are flip tool, text tool and bucket fill tool. Flip tool lets you flip the image horizontally or vertically. Text tool basically lets you put text on the image and the bucket fill tool lets you fill a certain region with a chosen color. Now the sixth row in the toolbox. This here is the gradient tool. I use it to make gradient backgrounds a lot of the time. The next two tools are pencil tool and paintbrush tool. Pencil tool creates hard edge strokes and paintbrush tool creates kind of like soft edge strokes. Right next to the paintbrush tool is the erase tool. It is used to erase things, of course. The airbrush tool lets you paint with a brush with various kind of pressure. You can build up layers of airbrush if you want. In the seventh row, the only tool I use is the clone tool. Hold Ctrl and select a region to set it as the starting point. Then click and hold while dragging your mouse around to clone the region from the starting point. In the 8th row, I usually use the Blur, Sharpen tool and the Smudge tool. I don't really use the Sharpen tool, just the Blur tool in case I want to soften the edge of an image. The Smudge tool I usually use to even out the texture of the background after erasing, for example, text or objects from the image. Now that the main toolbox is out of the way, I'm going to show you some of the most commonly used features in GIMP. First of all, to create a new image project, click File and then New. A Create a New Image box will pop up letting you choose the right size for your image. This is what I usually work with, so I won't change anything. And when I click OK, a new image will show up on the image window. The new image will be filled with the color from the background color tray. If you want to import a picture or an image as a new project, then click File, then Open. Then select the file you want to import. The image will be imported as a separate project from the pink image I created. If you want to import a picture or an image as a layer of an already existed project, then click File and then Open as Layers. Then select the file you want to import. The image will be imported as a layer in this project. When you are in the middle of editing but for some reason have to stop, you can save the project you are working on by clicking File and then Save. Select the location where you want your file to be, give it a name, then click Save. The file will be saved under .xcf format, which is the game project format. One small tip for people who have quick PCs, it is extremely frustrating to see game crash while you're in the middle of designing. I haven't seen game crashing on my laptop lately, but I created a habit of manually saving every 10 minutes while working. And I do it pretty easily by pressing Ctrl S, the file will be saved immediately. When you make a few modifications to your already saved file and you want to save both projects, click File then Save As. Give this file another name, for example, file name dash final, then click Save. Now you have both the original version and the modified version of the project. Moving on, when you finish designing and want to export the image, there are two ways you can do it. You can either overwrite the original image by clicking File then Overwrite or you can export it as a separate image by clicking File then Export as. Pick a location, give your image a name then click Export. There will be another box pop-up 
just don't pay any attention to it and just click export next you can redo or undo steps by clicking edit and then redo or undo but i personally use shortcut keys a lot because it is a lot faster if you want to redo a step press ctrl y if you want to undo a step press ctrl z these shortcut keys also apply to other programs like photoshop and premiere pro next up if you want to copy and paste a picture or an image into a project copy the image or picture that you want then go to gimp remember to have the project opened and ready for the image or picture you want to paste and then just press ctrl v on the keyboard and the image or picture will be pasted onto the project but this is only a floating layer you have to assign it to either the layer below it or a new layer to assign the pasted layer to the layer below it click anchor the floating layer to assign the pasted layer to a new blank layer click this button right here it's too long i'm not gonna say the whole thing the next commonly used feature is the guides feature you can enable the grid by clicking image then guides new guides by percent i usually need to enable only the guides in the center of the image which mean 50 percent horizontal and 50 percent vertical it's a bit tedious because you have to go back and forth and do all the steps again to draw another guy but it helps with designing so i'm not gonna complain anymore i'm going to stop here for this menu bar because if i talk about all the features it's gonna be a 10 hour video believe me now i want to talk a bit about this layers channels past doc you can just ignore these two docs right here which are the channels and paths doc they're a bit hard to understand and use even for me the only doc that you are going to use throughout the process of designing is the layers doc now to create a new layer you can either click this button at the bottom of the doc or you can right click on the doc and choose new layer you will then see this new layer window pop up the only two factors you need to know are layer name and fill width you can change the layer's name here to avoid mistaking it with other layers in fill width you have multiple choices like foreground color background color white transparency and pattern moving on if you want to duplicate a layer right click on the layer you want to duplicate then click duplicate layer pretty obvious i mean next if you want to merge layers for example if i want to merge the second layer with the third layer which is right below it then right click on the second layer here and choose merge down you can actually mistake this merge down option with the flatten image option merge down option only allows you to merge one layer with the layer below it but the flat image option basically merge everything together finally if you want to delete a layer you can either click this button here at the bottom of the dock or you can right click on the layer then choose delete layer and that's it for the first part of this whole topic this whole thing i hope that you find this program and this video helpful because i do and you should too anyway thank you for watching this video don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in the next video bye say bye